The end of the year catch up. I bet you didn't expect this video to be even coming out to even exist uh, anymore because as you may know, uh, I made a video every single month by the end of the month wrapping up everything that I watched in that month and uh, this is called the end of the year catch up. This is the this is the last catch up that I would do on 2018 films by the end of the year just to you know go through what everything in 2018 what I didn't watch maybe to catch it in January and then wrapping up before I made the best of 2018 list that video is still coming out so before that I want to make this video wrapping up you know as a whole of 2018 I caught 14 films in the past 20 days roughly these films are the films that came out in 2018 but I just never caught it and then just before that I want to you know make sure that I watched as much as I can as many as I can uh, so that I don't miss anything uh, this video is going to be a little bit different than any other uh, monthly catch-up because I'm not going to categorize them I'm, I'm just going to go through them alphabet alphabetically so usually I have like play it or stream it or whatever must watch whatnot uh, this in this video we're not gonna have that we're just gonna go through it alphabetically first one being a private war this movie came out I believe by the almost by near the end of the year I never caught it I watched it starring Rosamund Pike it tells a true story about this journalist going to actual war zone to get the realist information and uh, that experience that she can ever get so that she can write write the stories and articles the, the best she could so that the reader reading it can feel what it's like actually in the war zone. I thought that's a good idea. It is it is based on a true story and it, this story deserves to be told. And I thought the film was all right. It, it, it fell short a little bit. I'm not talking about runtime. I feel, I'm talking about the emotional punch to everything. I think the editing could be a lot better. There are a lot of things that are, I thought it was really choppy. Also the direction as well. But I think the performances are all fine. The writing are all fine. Uh, Jamie Dornan, the, uh, the the character, his character in this film, I thought they could flesh out a little bit more. And I think overall, a Private War is almost forgettable, but it's also not a bad movie. Next one being Ben is back. This one has been getting a lot of good reviews. Julia Roberts is back, and stars Luca Hedges. It's about this 19-year-old called Ben who's an unexpectedly returned to home, and then we have this almost psychological thriller and character drama with uh, their family not believing that Ben is clean because he was a drug addict, and they're trying to figure it out, okay, if they're lying or not. And I thought this film was... Jesus Christ. I thought probably the best thing about this film is really Julia Roberts and the performances that she gave and the marketing. I, I remember first watching the trailer uh, in the theater uh, Accidentally because you know as you may know I don't watch trailers the trailer I respect a hell a lot It's just one scene with Julia Roberts driving going home. She gets out She sees Benz she walks up to him and then fade to black. That's the whole trailer and I love it That's the probably the best thing about it. The story however is another thing I thought the first maybe the first act of the movie sets up some pretty interesting future for the film and then after that, I feel like the film and just like the story really derails from everything that we respected. You either like it or you don't about that aspect. The, the, the entire film should probably be the the mother and son dynamic and, and all. But it, it is there. It is there throughout the entire film. But what's in the forefront is really about these families trying to find their dogs. And I thought that was not a good idea when, when it comes to writing. It feels so... I don't know how to really explain it. It feels so detached from everything else. Uh, and along the way, we explore some character moments and whatnot. But it has been getting good reviews, so go see for yourself. When it's back, I thought it was... Eh. Not, I wouldn't think of it in, probably ever again. Next one being Border. This is, this is it. Like, this is it. This is the, the, the what the fuck movie of 2018. You thought Suspiria... You thought Suspiria, a cure for winners from from the year before, a mother from the year before was fucking insane. Border is on a whole new level because when you watch this shit, you have no idea what the fuck is going on. It's a Swedish film, I believe. It calls Gran, so I don't know how to uh, pronounce that. It's about these two weird-looking 
people coming together but you don't know what they are because they're so weird they look weird they they act weird. they smell people so that they can sense the person's guilt or sense the person's happiness or mood and whatnot is the weirdest shit ever and then you 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 thought the first half was like the first maybe 90 percent of the film was fucking weird wait for that forest scene because that scene blew me away on how fucking twisted it was but the thing about Border is that after I watched it, after I thought about it, I have no idea what this movie is about. Next one is Don't Worry, He Won't Get Far on Foot. I believe it was a true story starring Walking Phoenix, fantastic actor, Rooney Mara, fantastic actress. Uh, Jonah Hill gave some, some a great performance in this one. It's about this true story about John who who was in an accident and he lost his ability to walk. He's on his wheelchair for the rest rest of his life and he's trying to figure some stuff out. Going to you know a rehab, I believe. Going to rehab because he is an alcoholic and trying to figure out what went wrong in his life that he got to this point. He starts drawing. He starts sketching out cartoons that are considered offensive by a lot of people. And I think that's about it. I thought this film was a little bit disappointing because I had a really, I don't, I didn't really believe the critic when I, when this movie first came out because Joaquin Phoenix, Jonah Hill, Rooney Mara, Jack Black are in there, great cast, and I thought this film has to be good, right? The, the film was boring. I thought the tone was okay. I thought Rooney Mara's character is so underdeveloped. She was barely in this film. Jack Black characters and his dynamic with Joaquin Phoenix character. I thought they can you know work something a lot more than that. But after all, it just feels like a scene after scene about setting the mood of the film, building a character around Joaquin Phoenix's character scene after scene it doesn't lead to anything that is exciting there's no ups and down and i think you can go in and watch this movie as a character study jonah hill's character is really interesting in this film and the, his dynamic with our main character is interesting in that way and i think if you want to go in to this movie expecting like a drama with fantastic dynamics and well-written uh scenes and dialogue and whatnot you're not gonna get that so do do walking with caution monsters and men this film i believe came out in sundance or cons or something like that this film i w was really conflicted about it it's, it's basically the the hate you give you have seen that one it came out a couple of months ago in 2018 whatever it's it's basically we're at a point here like in this day and age we have this uh political Drama. I don't even know how to call it. It's its own genre. The hate you give, blind spotting, monsters and men. You can name a whole lot about this race racism thing that is happening in our society today. We can call it its own genre. Monsters and men feel it, it feels like the hate you give to me. And as you may know, I'm really conflicted about the hate you give because I don't know what what is what anymore. If a film is a direct de direct depiction of reality than what makes cinema cinema, you know? Monsters and Men is that. It's three different stories. We follow three different characters throughout the entire film and they're connected somewhat. We follow each and one of the aspects and the perspective because they all have different they're all coming from different perspectives. And I think that's an interesting in that way. But I feel like overall if you really look at the writing and the story it that it is telling it doesn't feel like a drama it doesn't feel like you want to sit down and enjoy this film it just feel like a hey racism is wrong and this is what's wrong in this in the society today it just feels like a propaganda after all next one we have puzzle i love puzzle i love this movie uh it's not like a masterpiece i, I thought the writing was fantastic it's great the uh, just character is great one of my favorite antagonist protagonist of the year and i think i why the reason why i love puzzle so much because it's so personal to me i am a puzzle fan and it just everything that i feel about jigsaw puzzle being told in a film format and that's everything that i ever wanted to be puzzle is that if you like puzzle and i think if you just like good written script go watch puzzle because it has a good protagonist and antagonist it has its way of you know showing something through details and i think you should go see it just for the story's sake but again if you're a jigsaw puzzle fan 
go watch this movie. I think you're gonna like this one. Next one being Scape Kitchen. This film also came out as Sundance. I don't really know. Skate Kitchen is another skate movie after mid '90s. I think it was it was before, but whatever. It's 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 a character study. This film is definitely a character study. It doesn't have any plot whatsoever. It just like we just get montage after montage about this kid uh, trying to just skateboard on the street with her friends, and then her mother doesn't allow her. It really takes you on a journey in her mind that what skating means to her and what role does skating play in her life of growing up and i think that's a good interesting aspect of the film i thought the film was a little bit too long it's i think it's an hour and 40 or 50 minutes long it's not too long but i feel long because the pacing is a little bit off i think there are a couple of scenes that you can cut out a couple of montages are pretty well shot and this film was really well shot it has a mood of indie it has a mood of sundance indie and do we expect that? Uh, I think uh, if you enjoy mid-90s, even though mid-90s is 100% more intense than this one, um, if you feel personal watching mid-90s, go watch this one. Next one being Support the Girls. I thought this film was insanely interesting when it comes to com concept. It's just one day. This film takes over the course of one day. We follow one character and her life of that day. She is a manager, I believe, in this... Uh, diner and we just follow her story and she's trying to figure out her life she's trying to help other people and other people tries to trying to help her but she doesn't really allow that and she also has this dynamic of i want to help you but what if you don't appreciate it it's really about it's really positive this film is really optimistic and whatnot and i believe it was on obama's end of the year list as well there are great performances in there and i think this film it's it's like one of those overlooked film by the end of the year you thought oh, this this is the film that you missed in 2018 but by the end of the year no one is actually talking about it support the girls next one being the death of stalling this film came out near the at the bit at the beginning of the year i wanted to watch this for so long but i just never caught it i finally had had the chance to see it uh it was it's basically the 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 quentin tarantino without the shuffling around the sequences uh chronologic chronologically or out of out of water it's basically that with slightly lesser written dialogue because this film is an action movie but without the action it's just people talking to each other back and forth back and forth and the dialogue is really well written it's fantastic and you see, it's so funny the death of stalin is actually really really funny and it's just a really well crafted film especially on the dialogue it's insanely funny we have this after the death of stalin it's really about all of these people trying to trying everything to gain that authority since Stalin was Stalin dead died and I think it's so cool to see these characters just talking back and forth spitting out ideas and how they think of each other because that is the most funniest thing ever next one being the guilty another foreign film I believe it was Danish this film was I am a fan of this movie as you may know I am a big fan of claustrophobic thriller and this is that bottle bottle food movie like saw like uh the phone booth movies like that it's about this uh, this police officer on a phone call is that's it that's everything that's the 90 minute of this movie just him calling trying to figure out this case because uh there's this uh, woman on the other end who might be kidnapped he's trying to figure it out with all the information that she can give and trying to f save her uh, essentially and also he himself is going through some stuff as well i think this movie was really well done it's it's just fantastic if you love bottle movies if you like lock that movie is probably the best uh, representation or uh, you can grab the most uh, similarities from that one to this uh, if you like Locke, you will like this one. And I think this one is probably even a little bit, it's it's on the same level as Locke. Next one being The House That Jack Built. This, mil, this movie was also a what the fuck movie. You watch it, you don't know, you have no idea what the fuck you just watched. Uh, this is the director who brought you uh, Nymphomaniac in the past. I never watched those. I never watched this film, I believe, maybe, I don't know. But The House That Jack Built was definitely something that people will talk about i don't really know about the directors uh, you know because 
he might be controversial. I believe some people are talking about his controversies and whatnot and what he brings to the table and it comes off as narcissistic and egotistical and whatnot. But I think as a film, I didn't know anything about the the director, but watching The House That Jack Built as a film individually, I thought the film was interesting. Uh, it was It's really long. It's two and a half hours. But at least when I was watching this movie, I never felt bored. I was always intrigued of what this movie can give the uh, the story uh, how the story was told was a little bit different it's not like a traditional uh, storytelling in hollywood you see all the time we we get intercut with these pictures and clips that are different in different aspect ratio with two people talking in the background voiceovers they're having a conversation conversation about art life death and their idea of life and afterlife and whatever it's insanely like I would say quote unquote deep but at the same time I I really don't want like that this is that type of movie like Suspiria after I watch it I thought it was interesting I don't know what it's about but I have no drive to want to figure out what it is about I don't want to because I just I barely care about it I think that's what's missing about in these films and it's just like that lingering effect after you watch it you want to go research you want to go dig deep in, into it you want to analyze it this film doesn't have that the last shot though was fantastic go see it the performance the performance from matt dylan is fantastic and uh just go watch it it's gruesome it's gory it's twisted it's about the serial killer so go watch it and you know see what you make of it the next one being utoya or utoya i believe that's how you pronounce it Utoya July uh, 22nd uh, it was it's another foreign film it, it was Norwegian it's based on a true story about this summer camp uh, massacre happened in there over there in 2011 in Utoya Island and this film go watch this movie uh, this film was shot completely in one take not like Birdman, there's no editing, it's just 90 minutes of one take, I have no idea how they pull it off, there are some shots that I thought, that must be a cut. But it, after like watching some of the interviews from the in director, from the actors, it seems like they're, they're talking that this film was completely shot in one take, there's no editing, but even though there are some scenes that I thought, okay, that has definitely, there there is a cut there, it's still pretty damn impressive. This is 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 a 90 minute film shot in real time uh in real time so it's a one minute in the film equates to one minute in real life and uh you you get to the, the filmmakers really put you in that situation and experience that gun shooting massacre in real time it brings you it brings you there it's basically a true event the filmmakers created some fiction as fictional characters and then we follow that character along the way to explore this this horrible horrible event that happened in the past and i think that's so interesting i think if you walk into this movie without knowing anything anything outside of that film without and knowing the filmmaker's intention without any prior knowledge to it you're gonna think that this movie was interestingly pulled off it's it's well done it's well shot but you will think that the story is boring but after you watch it, you look, really look into this movie and what is ev what everyone was thinking when, when making this project. This film just went from fucking 0 to 100 real quick. Next one being We the Animals. This film was compared to Moonlight a lot because it is kind of like that. Uh, I, don't, I don't see it. Just because you have a gay kid doesn't mean that it is Moonlight. Uh, we the Animals definitely brings a lot to the table. It, it, it's intercut with this kid writing and uh, scribbling in his journal, uh, uh, mostly drawings, and it becomes some animation that simulates his um, emotion in a way. The director himself is uh, it's, it's a passion project to him. We the Animals came out in Sundance, I believe. It's really about this coming of age story about three boys growing up with an abusive father and whatnot and that's about how it can impact their lives along the way and it's 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 that but this film was really well shot definitely one of the best cinematography of the year and uh, I feel like this movie is was really slow paced uh, it's not a slow burn I think the pacing is a little bit off they can tweak a little bit but after all it's a Sundance indie film 
it's that it's is is exactly what you wanted in a movie like with the animals and uh, i think you can enjoy it next one is the last one this is the last one on the list it's a little wildlife yes it's wildlife a lot of people are talking about this one being the best one of the best film of the year i thought the film was good it was definitely good but the subplot i thought the, was better than the plot itself because we just the entire film for the entire film we follow a character that is so boring that he has nothing to do with the story the protagonist the main character in this film is designed to be an audience character to see what we see to hear what we hear and that's the the, the live and breed of the main character that's the most boring part of the movie but everything else is great so that I don't I don't really agree that this is one of the best film of the year. I just feel like what's happening in the background is actually more interesting than what's happening in the foreground and I don't really care about what's happening in the foreground. So, but at least when I watched it, I was intrigued for the entire time. And by the end of the film, you think that, "Oh, what wildlife really means, the title of the film really means." And then it gives another layer to it and I think that's probably the best thing about it. Uh, wildlife was good. It was really well shot, really well acted. It's the, my only problem with this one is really the writing of the protagonist because he's so boring. Okay, we're at the end of the video. Oh, well, let's wrap this up. Um, um, we'll look out for videos. Videos are coming up. Uh, the last video that I'll make about movies in 2018 is the next video that I will make. Probably I will try to get it before February though like uh, in January. I will try to wrap everything up uh, That video is going to sum up everything everything in 2018 the best of the year list some of the list that I made up That doesn't really make sense, but I thought it was funny. So I made them and uh, look out for those videos I hope you enjoyed this one Definitely tell me in the comments what you think of these movies and these movies and what you think of the video and uh, Yeah, I'll see you next time before February, hopefully, hopefully before February I can I can make that video, I can get that video done. Thank you for watching.